Hi everyone, this is Alejandra. This week we're going to use Power Query to extract only the rows from our files that contains specific text. For example, here I have all the lines from three files that contains the text brand C. Store 1, 2, and 3 are the names of my files. Store 1 starts from here to here. Store 2 from line 10 to line 17 and so on. But it's very hard for me to see how many items are coming from each file. So as a bonus today, I'm going to show you how to insert an index column to every single table here before expanding. So you can see easily how many items you are bringing from each file. You may find this index column useful later on. If you like what you see here, remember to subscribe and let's get this done. Let me start by showing you the content of the files. Here, um, they are safe on my demo folder on my desktop. So I'm gonna just open them, select them, press enter to open them. Store two, you will notice that this is the only file or the only store that has items with brand T. All the files have the same columns with the same titles and only one sheet that is called sheet one. Okay, here uh, we have uh, store two, let's close it, store one, and store three. Okay, let's open a new workbook right here, a blank workbook. Let's go to data, get data from file, from folder. This is the folder that I just showed you, demo on my desktop, double click there, click at open. Here we have the list of the files that I just showed you, store one, two, and three, and let's click at transform data. The Power Query Editor opens. I'm using Microsoft 365. We have our files here. And first thing that we're gonna do, good practice, select extension, transform, format, uppercase. So let's uh, transform this to all uppercase so we can filter. And just in case that we save something else there, like PDF file or CSV, then we are gonna prevent bringing those files to our query. So let's right click here where it says X lsx text filter equals so with this we have created a filter that it will bring only the file that it ends in xlsx now on the name column let's click at this row and text filter let's say contains and i want to bring only the files that contain the name store uh, remember power query is case sensitive so make sure that you are typing the store in the same way that your files uh, have that name i say okay now we have created a second uh, filter for a store. So we are preventing errors in the future. That is correct. Now let's extract the content of each file. So let's go to add column, custom column. And I don't care too much about the name of the column. I'm not going to keep it. So I'm going to say Excel dot workbook. Oh, brought me double Excel. Make sure that you have only one Excel dot workbook. Open parenthesis and I want to bring the content from my content column. So it's here on the right, double click there, close parenthesis, and I say OK. I see here on my table, if I click on the right of this table, let me make this a little bit uh, bigger, Control Shift Plus, zoom in. Here I have my tables, and let's go back here. So I want to keep the name of the files and I want to keep the last column that I just created. So I select the column name, press and hold control, go and select custom and I'm going to right click, remove other columns. Because I selected in that order, I have the name first and the tables in the second column, that is correct. Uh, now I want to remove the extension from my name. So I select the column, I go to transform and I'm going to say extract uh, text before the limiter. My delimiter will be the dot dot before the xlsx and that is what is separating the name of the file and the extension okay i'm gonna say okay and now here i want to extract the information that is coming from my data column to do that i'm gonna go here on top of the custom column click at those rows and i want to remove the check marks and i remove the check mark also on use original column name as prefix and i'm going to select only data that is the only column that i want to bring i say okay and now i have here the tables that i show you at the beginning that is correct but what i see is that power query didn't promote the headers so i'm going to fix that i'm going to go to add column custom column 
I'm not concerned about the title of this column. I'm going to leave it as custom. I'm not going to keep it, but I need it. I'm going to say table dot uh, promote headers right here. I have double table. Be careful with that. Just keep one. Open parenthesis and it's asking me for a table. The, my table is coming here from my column and data. So select that on the right, double click, close parenthesis and say, OK. Now I see that I have my um, first lines as headers on each table. That is correct. So now let's provide the text that we're looking for. Uh, before I do that, let me just quickly rename some of these steps. So here, this added custom was to bring the uh, content of my files. So I'm going to right click, rename, and I'm going to say um, bring content. content. Perfect. And here, expand the custom. I'm going to rename it as get tables. And the last one this is going to be uh, promote headers. Okay, perfect. Okay, so here we have that info. Excellent. Now let's look for the text. Now let's provide the text that we're looking for. I'm going to go to add column, custom column, and I'm going to rename this as find text. That's the name of my column. And here I'm going to tell Power Query um, table dot um, find text. Be careful, there is one uh, formula for list and one for table. It's the one with the table that I want. Okay, so go here, table, open parenthesis, and I need to provide a table. The table will come from my custom uh, column, comma, and I need to provide the text that I'm looking for. In this case, let's say I want to bring the text brand T. And this is within quotation marks. Close parenthesis and press OK. Perfect. My first table is empty because the store one doesn't have that uh, brand or that item from that brand. The second file has only two items and the third uh, file doesn't have any. So this is working correctly. Now, if I expand this as is, it will bring me one empty line for store one, two lines for store two, and one empty line for store three. And I don't want that. So to fix that, let's add another column. I'm going to go to add column, custom column, and I'm going to say, uh, I don't mind about custom dot one. I'm not going to keep it anyways. So I'm going to say table dot select columns. Perfect. This one. Oh. And let me delete one table here and open parentheses and it's going to ask me for a table and i want the last table the, the last uh, column that we added that has the tables that we're looking for so find text double click there comma and i need to provide the columns which columns i'm looking for and the column is called brand that is what, where all the brands are coming from so brand in quotation marks because it's text i'm, I'm going to close parentheses i'm going to say okay now here we see from store two I have only one column. That is exactly what I wanted. Perfect. So let me double click here at this last step. And I'm going to press enter here. And I'm going to ask Power Query to tell me if this is empty. So I'm going to say table dot is empty. I'm going to open parenthesis and close parenthesis at the end. And this is going to tell me if it's empty or not. So here, on the top, I'm going to press enter just to move this down a little bit. So here I'm going to say, if the table is empty, then zero, else one. So what I'm saying is, if the table is empty, bring me a zero. Anything else, bring me one. And I'm going to say, OK. Now I can see that I have a zero for the empty table. I have a one for the table that has information. Exactly what I wanted, I'm going to just filter this column click uh, on the row so i'm going to remove the zeros and i'm going to keep the one that's all that i want so let me rename this step added custom let's rename this as um, spring column and the second one you can put something more meaningful <laughs> for me it's just at least to have an idea what i did there so right click to this one rename and i'm going to say the second one is filter empty from what I did here, I'm just going to bring the information from the tables with information. Okay. 
So now I can keep just fine text uh, column and the other one will be okay the name the name of the file select the column name press and hold control select find text and i'm doing in this order because that's exactly how i want to keep it so i'm going to right click and remove other columns okay store two and has these two items excellent now i can expand click at these arrows beside the find text i'm going to remove this check mark i don't want to use the original column name as prefix and i'm going to say okay excellent i have the information that i need now, from what I'm seeing uh, here in find text, if I want to change the text that I want to bring, I have to do it manually. Let's say here, I'm gonna bring A, I'm gonna press enter, I'm gonna go to the last step, and I can see that I have now brand A, and now I have more I. Now I can see that I brought the information with text brand A. I have more files where this information is coming from, the store one, two, and three. But for me, it's very hard to tell how many items I'm coming from this file. For, for example, store one ends in eight, so store two ends in 17, so I need to subtract 17 minus eight. So it's not practical for me. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add an index before I expand. So when I expand, the index will be included on this table. So I'm gonna remove the last step. I'm gonna just uh, click at that X on the left of that step. And here, I'm gonna add another column. So I go to add column, custom column, and this one I'm gonna say find text with index. And I'm gonna call the table dot index, what is that one? Add index column, this one, perfect. Okay, I go to the end, open parentheses, and my table is coming from my uh, second column, that is find text double click there that is this column and I'm gonna uh, provide the comma the new column name how I'm gonna call this column that I'm inserting so I'm gonna call it index every time that I insert an index column I like to keep this index as title so I identify it's not part of my original data I added that index column myself okay comma uh, and I provided the index as a text so that's why it's within uh, quotation marks the initial value, I want that the initial value is one. You can say that it started from zero. Uh, Power Query is base zero. But in my case, I just want number one. I can start from any number that I want. And I also provide the comma and I can provide the increment. In my case, I just want to increment by one. There is another argument that I can provide uh, is optional. That is the data type. I'm not gonna provide that. Um, really, it doesn't affect me if I don't provide it right now. So I'm gonna keep it only up to there. So I close parentheses and I say, okay. Now you can see that we have our index column on each file. Okay, now we can see that for this one, we have, uh, for the first file, we have eight, the second nine, and the third seven. Okay, excellent. So let me see, let me rename this. It's gonna say index included. included. Perfect. So now I still have one more thing to do before I expand. So if I go to find text, I still need to manually change the text every single time that I want to change it. Let's fix that. I'm gonna go here to home, manage parameters, new parameter. Okay, I'm gonna rename this parameter as my text. That is the text that I'm looking for, okay, my text. Uh, I can provide a description. In this case, I'm just gonna leave it as is. Uh, the type, I want that this comes as a text and uh, any value. And the value that I want to provide right now, let's say I'm gonna say brand C. I say, okay. So here I have my parameter. Here is my brand C, I can change it anytime. So I go to demo, find text. Here where I have brand A, hard coded. I'm gonna delete that, including the quotation marks. And I'm gonna say my text. Perfect. So remember we have brand A, but our parameter has brand C. Once I press enter, my tables will have brand C. Very cool. <laughs> I love it. So uh, let's say if I change this to B, right here, I go back to my demo query, and now I have the information for brand B. It's working perfectly. Uh, I don't need the find text column anymore. I'm gonna delete that and I'm ready to expand this. I'm go here on top of the column, uh, click at the rows, 
I want to expand all the columns. I don't want to use the original column uh, name as prefix, so it's good that I don't have that check mark here. I say OK. And here I have all my information. So the only thing that I notice is that my index is at the end. I can just move it, drag it, uh, select, drag it, and move it just beside the item, or I could just um, adjust in this part. So I could have moved it from here, just reallocate it to the, to the beginning, and same thing in here, move it from the end to the beginning. Um, it's up to you how you want to do it. I don't like to see too many steps, so usually I just move it manually here. But in this case, I'm just going to leave it as is for, for the purpose of this example. We are ready to pass this to Excel. So I'm going to go here to Home, Close and Load, and Close and Load to here I want to only create connection and I'm going to say OK. Perfect. So I can select my demo query, right click, load to. Let's load it as a table on the existing worksheet. Right here, A1 is correct. I say OK. And here we have our information with our index uh, column and we know for sure how many items we have from each file. I hope you found this information useful. If you like it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Also, share with anybody that you believe can benefit from it. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.